Hey everybody. Today we're going to start with some push-ups. And the reason I like to use push-ups um, is because it's an easy thing that you can do um, utilizing your body weight. They're not easy. That's a very, very challenging exercise, but it's it, you can do them anywhere and you don't need any equipment. So, and also there's many different ways to do it. So we're going to start with the countertop push-up. So if this is your first time doing a push-up, um, start at a countertop. Your kitchen sink works great. We've reviewed this before, but you want to start with your shoulders down and pushing in like that, pushing yourself away. So the closer your feet are to the counter, the easier it is, and the further you move your feet back, the harder it can become. So keep your elbows in if you have any shoulder pain, keep your abs nice and tight, and slowly push yourself away. Now, if you have done push-ups in the past and you know that you can do them, you can just start doing push-ups during this, but I wanna show a few different examples. The next variation is you can use your um, a bench or coffee table on your knees in the same position. You just wanna keep a straight line from your knees to your shoulders and lower like this. So this gives you the same muscles worked at the same position but it takes many of the levers out. If this feels like you want a little bit more of a challenge, then you can come up to your knee, to your toes on a bench. So that's a little bit more difficult, but it's still not as difficult as a full regular push-up. The next variation is coming down to your knees on the floor. You want to keep a nice straight line from your knees to the top of your head. So you want to keep your chin tucked when you're doing that push-up. And then, of course, you can come up to your toes um, for the full regular push-up. So you can find any one of those variations that works best for you. Um, if you find one is getting a little easier, try a few in the next phase, in the next position. Um, and then you can always, like if you're trying some on your toes, then you can drop to your knees for the rest of the set. Try to do 10. If you can do 10 push-ups and no problem, do 15, do 20. Challenge yourself. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is a sit to stand. So it's a good squat, but I'm gonna add a little bit of a press at the top. So sitting on a good firm kitchen chair or your coffee table or a bench, grab um, a weighted ball or a dumbbell or um, you know, a weighted water bottle, something like that. And I want you to do a sit to stand. And at the top, press that ball up overhead. I'm gonna raise that camera just a little. So press that ball right overhead at the top. So you're adding a little bit of extra difficulty by adding that weight, pressing it up overhead. The thing I like about doing sit to stands is you really forces you to sit back and really protect those knees. So it's a good squat in a really protected range of motion. And you can do more to make it more challenging. Really think about keeping those knees straight if you find that your knees are collapsing in when you stand up, think about, you really have to focus on trying to keep those knees straight over your ankles when you stand up, keeping everything in line. If you still can't do it, you can wrap a little band around your knees and think about pushing into that band and really Focus on that to keep, keep everything in line and not put any of that medial pressure on the insides of your knees. Okay, next, we're gonna do some shoulder exercises. So we'll do some lateral raises. And what I want you to do is if you have a ball, go ahead and grab it. You can do these standing too, of course. But sit on the ball, and we're going to go forward, and then 
do a rear lateral raise. So there's three heads to your deltoid here, and mostly we work this medial one by raising things out to our sides. And now I want to work the anterior and the posterior. So we do work our anterior a lot, but it gives that posterior a break. So forward, like you're going to cheer someone, and then this way, so like you're going to dump out a can. So cheers, dump it out. So in order to make this a little more difficult on the ball, pick up one foot if your balance is okay with this. If you find yourself wobbling too much and you can't perform the exercise, put that foot down. But you can alternate, you know, maybe every five. And this is going to be more challenging. So um, if you typically do a higher weight with your lateral raises, grab the next weight down for this one because this gets a little bit more challenging by engaging that posterior delt, which we don't utilize very often. So it gets ignored and it's not quite as strong. So when we add that in, it makes it more difficult. Okay, so play around with holding one leg up and then the other with that one. Okay, next we're gonna do bridges. And I'm gonna show you how to do bridges with your shoulders on a bench. So you can also do it with, the, with your shoulders on a ball, which I've shown you, and you're welcome to use here if you prefer. But I want to show you, I'm going to do the bridges a little bit differently than I have in the past. So right lower down, and you want your hips raised and pressing towards the ceiling. You want your shoulders and your head resting on the bench. And now I'm going to put my arms out on the bench for a little more stability. And what I want you to do is go down and up and down and up, and each time Press those hips towards the ceiling. Really engage those glutes. And also thinking about keeping those knees in perfect alignment. Now you notice I'm sort of pivoting on my heels. I think you can see my heels. But you want to be pushing your weight down through your heels. Now I'm letting my head stay in line with the rest of my spine by letting it come back and forth. Because if I leave it here, it really is hard on my neck. So just let it stay in a nice neutral position. Do 10 or 15. By the end of this, you should really be feeling it in those glutes and hamstrings. Okay, good. So you can also do this on a ball if you prefer, but I wanted to show you because you can easily use a bench or a coffee table. If you need to, you can kind of spread a blanket across the coffee table to make it softer on your shoulders. Okay, next we're gonna do some abs on the floor. So we can use a variety of modalities for this, a variety of um, balls. So I'm going to start off by showing you with the fit ball. So you can use a fit ball. And what I want to do is, um, first of all, focus on flattening that back into the floor, like we've talked about with so many other exercises. So that's going to engage these lower abdominals, your transverse abdominus. Flatten that back to the floor to protect that low back. Start with the ball over your head. Bring your knees and the ball towards. Now, I have a really big ball, so this isn't going to work for me for this one. So I can use my playground ball. Same thing. So bring your knees and hands together and just take turns. Really keep that back flat to the ground. Keep your knees bent with this. If you really feel like this is not very challenging and you do not have back problems, you can go ahead and extend your knees. But for the majority of us, I think it's probably best to keep those knees bent. You can also use a weighted ball. So. This ball weighs about six pounds, but adds a little more challenge. It actually adds a little more um, adductor, it calls in a little bit more adductor in those hips, and it works a little more of your lats by bringing this forward and back. So you can play with it, figure out what works for you. If your ball is a little big and it can't stay in those knees, use a, a soccer ball or a basketball or a playground ball. Um, 
or a little bit of a weighted ball. It adds a little more challenge to it. Okay, let's see. Oh, the last one I have is a balance agility exercise, which we've done before. And in the gym, I use my ladder quite a bit, and some of you do use this, but move this out of the way. What I want you to do today is a little bit different. Bring this over further. See if I can get the whole thing in the shot. Okay, as long as you can see my feet. So the last time we did this, we just went in, in, out, out, all the way along the side like that. So you can either draw with chalk on your sidewalk or your driveway, or you can um, lay out with masking tape on your driveway or in your in your garage or you know in your basement somewhere like that. I'm gonna move this over as far as I can. And then today I want you to cross over. So, so I want you to step in. So right, left, and then I want you to cross over. And if you don't have anything, you can also just kind of do these steps, these motions, and then over, and then back, cross over right, cross over left, step back, cross over right, step back. Okay, so you can do them as slow as you need to to get started. Think about dancing here. All the way out. And then as you kind of get the hang of it, we really kind of want to work on that agility here. The more agile you become, the better you re reduce your risk for falls. So the kind of, the, you know, you don't want to go so fast that you fall, but challenge yourself. Figure out where you can comfortably go a little bit faster up on your toes. So then we'll finish this one, cross over, and back. And now we're gonna lead with the other foot. So whichever foot you just started with, now we're gonna start with the other foot. So I just did my right foot. Now I'm gonna do my left. So I'm gonna go left, right, cross over, cross over. Left, right, cross over, cross over. Left, right, and then I'm gonna lead back. Oops, left. Cross over and back. So we'll do that a few times. Oops. Cross over and back. Good. So, like I said, you can um, use sidewalk chalk and draw it on your garage or draw it on your driveway or draw it. Um, you can use masking tape on your kitchen floor or you know, you can even use your tiles on your kitchen floor. If you have, like my tiles are about a foot. So you can use your tile all along. Um, if you have a longer hallway full of tiles, you can, you know, kind of mix it up and, and challenge yourself. So, and also make sure that you're doing it safely. Okay, let's go through everything again. So remember, we started off with countertop push-ups and then push-ups on your knees. I'm just going to do... 10 push-ups, so I'm gonna pretend that I'm challenging myself by doing five push-ups on my toes and then I'm gonna drop to my knees. So I'll show you how that looks. So one, keeping that head in line. All I do is drop my knees and continue on. All right, good. And then a good stretch after this one is just to sit back in child's pose. So that's a good one to do at the very end of this, in addition to the rest of your stretches. Okay, next sit to stand with a weight press. So I moved my bench back a little bit, but it might work better so you can see the whole process. Okay, remember you want your knees straight in line. Press that ball overhead so you can use a dumbbell. You can use a gallon jug, you can use a water bottle, or if you do have a weighted ball, 
just adds a little bit of a challenge, and it also uh, makes you not use your hands to press off that chair or this sit to stand. Let's do two more. Good. And again, if you do find, like if you get halfway through and you can't do it without pressing up, then drop the ball. That's okay. You know, you have to figure out where, where this all works for you. Okay, lateral raises on the ball. So we're going to challenge ourselves by picking up one foot. My camera. There we go. So I'm going to start with this foot. And this also adds some core work by holding that leg up and also holding our body still while we keep that one foot up. If you have any shoulder pain with this, stop, don't do it, and then just um, send me a message and I can give you a different thing to do. The other thing is you can do it bent arms, so you can kind of play with it a little bit, but if you have, if you do have shoulder pain, pain, try less weight. If it still hurts, message me and I'll send you a different exercise in lieu of this one. Okay, great. Next, we're going to do those bridges. And this time I am going to do it with my shoulders on the ball just so you can see it if you do have a ball and you're not quite sure how to do it. So remember you can do it with your shoulders on that bench or you can start with the shoulders on that ball. So the benefit of the ball is you can rest your head on that ball also when you come up. They can be a little bit more comfortable on your shoulders if you do have a ball. Remember, I'm keeping those knees straight out from my hips. I'm keeping the weight, I don't think you can see, in my heels as I come up and go down. Really pressing through my heels, pressing my hips straight towards the ceiling. All right, good, I think that was 10. Do one for good measure, and then you can walk yourself back up. All right, great. That's a little bit differently than we do at the bridges in the gym sometimes. Sometimes I do have you come up into a bridge and hold it. So going up and down like that um, just keeps those muscles moving and keeps them activated and keeps them having to really support. So it's just kind of always do, if you can always do it a little bit differently, it's also a good thing. Okay. Let's see, ball transfers with your abdominals on the floor. So I'm gonna use my playground ball here. You can grab whatever ball you may have. Um, you can also use a balance disc if you have one, but just holding it, here we go. So first and foremost, pressing that back into the floor, engaging those low abs, protecting that back, keeping that head, chin tucked. All right, we'll start with the ball overhead. Grab it. And remember, I'm going to keep those knees bent to protect that low back. And the, if you do feel like this is not very hard, grab a weighted ball. Grab even um, Dumbbells wouldn't work very well for this because you can't squeeze it between your knees, but you could do a water bottle. It's hard to squeeze that between your knees. This playground ball works out perfectly. I do have um, people do it with a fit ball in the gym. My, my ball is just a little bit big for it. I can't make it work. All right. One more time. Okay, good job. And if you need to, after that, if you do start to feel it in your back, stop, reset, and then at the end, you can just grab those knees, too, to stretch out that back and give it a little love if you do feel it in your back. And if you do, send me a message, because there's a few other things we can do, lots of other things, really, to help you with that low back and make sure you're strengthening all of your core. 
to protect that back. Okay, the last one is the agility. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Nope. So we'll bring this over here. I'm gonna move this bench over just a little more. So yeah, the tile on your kitchen floor would actually work perfect for this. So it's about exactly the same. So you can you could go all the way up your up your kitchen floor, all the way back. Oops, so we're gonna cross over this time. Up on your toes. If you have really big tile, it might not work. Maybe you have smaller tile in your bathroom. Um, or just get some masking tape and make yourself a ladder the length of, of your garage or if you have an unfinished basement, you could make a ladder. You could do it on the carpet if you want. Um, depends on if you want to have that on your carpet. But it would come off. Painter's tape would work really well. Crossing over, trying to do it as quickly as possible. Okay, now we're gonna switch. So whichever foot you just started with, now we're gonna switch. And lead with that foot each time. Switching often can be the hardest part. It can kind of mess, mess with our brains a little bit. And then once you get into the swing of it, it's easier. i to raise this up. There we go. Do it as fast as you can, safely. The benefit of doing something on your tile, or if you do masking tape or something on your ground, then there's nothing to trip over. Okay, great. All right, everybody, thank you. Um, Give me some messages in the feedback. If you need anything, you can direct message me, private message me, and keep your ideas coming. Hopefully, um, I can continue to honor all of those requests. I appreciate it, and I will see you all again the next time. Thanks.